times there is some reason why things are happening. I'll show you, I'll read you something. I'm coming from there. I'm merely pointing out something and then coming from uh, to a point where I started with. Why silence? Uh, now, if it is not silent, if I'm making a noise, how am I seen? Look at that. Look at that scene. And who are responsible for that kind of scene? Why would I not be silent if this is what the response is? Look at a, a, a noble expression of a noble judge. And how do you see it? I'm sure at the first sight you'll be impressed. But is this what we're looking at? I'll read to you from a case from Punjab. The state of Punjab versus Gurdjit Singh was the case. It was a case of a uh, uh, girl uh, who was uh, who was talked, who was uh, troubled in a college campus. It was uh, a person. Uh, there at the examination of all, also that person does something to her, sitting uh, behind somewhere. The way the seats were arranged, things were not all right. This is an observation. It's a case relating to the girl who makes a complaint. And the, the question was, he is trying to be very uh, friendly to the ultimate cause of conviction. But then look at the expressions which he uses in this judgment. The trial court overlooked that a girl in a tradition bound non permissive society like India would be extremely reluctant even to admit any incident, which is likely to reflect upon a chastity. And after being conscious of the danger of being ostracized by the society or being looked down by the society, have not informing the teachers or our friends at the examination center under circumstances cannot detract from her reliability. In the normal course of human conduct, this unmarried girl would not give publicity to such a traumatic experience she had undergone and would feel terribly embarrassed to relate this to any person. And overpowered by a feeling of shame and her natural inclination would be to avoid talking about it to anyone in the family and protect the honor of the family. Therefore, informing her mother only on return to the parental house and to no one else at the examination center, clear their truth, is in accordance with the normal human content. This is what is the judgment given by a judge who convicts her. You can feel comfortable about what all you say. But after all, he's committing what's wrong. But look at the expressions. These expressions are you comfortable about? Where the person says, would be extremely reluctant even to admit an incident. That she has admitted this incident, what kind of a person is she? Is she admitting it? Why wouldn't she admit it if it outrages the modesty? Why would he even look at it that this ought not to happen? Look at the other expression which he's saying. It would reflect upon the chastity if she uh, if she says that, and she would rather protect it as though nothing has happened to her. For her purity is so important that she will not say that, and therefore she opens up. There's something wrong. Now again, the, the judge uses she'd be ostracized by the society. Who has to be ostracized? The guy who did it to her, or to the person who says the complaint? She will be ostracized by the society if she were to report. She were to report, and being looked down by the society. Who would be looked down? The man who did it to her or would the woman be looked down upon? And now this is what she says. This unmarried girl would not like to give publicity to this traumatic incident. Is she seeking for publicity when she is making a complaint somewhere? And when she is not telling the person there in that place and only to her mother? And again, it should be, she will be overpowered by a feeling of shame. Who should be shamed? Who should feel ashamed about a conduct like this? And then the natural inclination would be to avoid talking about it. She should not talk about it. The inclination must be not to talk about it and keep silent. And therefore it began. This culture of violence, if it must end, we must start with this, that we disapprove of expressions like this. A judge who grants a conviction is not a person who should be saying anything like that. Now do you say, or as a parent, you would not say, why do you say this aloud? Why do you want to give a publicity? Don't do that. Did you make a complaint immediately? Did you shake it up immediately? Did you tell anyone who is trying to do that this is the kind of guy? Bring the publicity to the guy who done, did the mistake. Don't think it is an adverse publicity to, it is an adverse publicity to someone else. <coughs> Rewrite your own conversations. That will be the best thing which we will be doing. What do we do sitting here? 
I wouldn't really worry for the kind of crowd, a big crowd or not. That is not that. It is a small crowd, a big idea must explode. And it can be from a very small crowd. It should start with us carrying an important message of how I will take a, a, an, a, an issue of a so-called dishonor to women. Where is the dishonor there for a woman? Look at this. We are talking also about uh, your property right. Uh, did you know women did not have property rights because, you know why? The woman was the property. So what is the property which you are trying to look at? And she was the carrier for the property whom she is to uh, deliver. That should be the man. And therefore she was the property and therefore if anything happens to that purity, it is unacceptable. Now, this is how we, 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 we thought. For a man, this happened from Haryana. The uh, yeah, 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 a girl from Haryana, yeah, Sharma, let him, therefore you know where, where the person comes from, what community the person is. This, uh, this girl goes to Bangalore. I don't know whether I, I said this at a previous meeting, because this is a case which troubles me no end. That uh, this girl, uh, who, she gets employed, she is a computer engineer, she gets employed to Erewa boy from Kerala. Yadavas are the lower, the, lower, the so-called, I would like to say uh, simply a lower caste, it's so-called. And uh, this, uh, this brother here uh, is troubled. Oh, my sister has got married to a boy and uh, what will I do to that guy? She, uh, he has brought dishonor to my family. She goes, he, he goes there. The sister uh, is somewhere not there. I don't know what you would have done with the sister. He murders uh, the husband. He murders the parents. He, mad, uh, he murders a small young sister of that boy who is also there in the house. The case goes for a trial. It lands in a conviction. No big deal. But here is a girl who is saying, I will take it to the Supreme Court and see that this guy is punished. I will take it as just not an honor to my family which is lost. It's a, it's a honor. This is the most dishonorable thing which has happened. What is the honor which is there left in my family to be lost there? She was prepared to take it against him and say, now I would secure to him a death sentence to my brother. Or be prepared to therefore see any conduct of immediately around us who is, uh, whose conduct is just not honoring, which does not uh, uh, approve of the woman's honor. Uh, would we treat the person with respect ever after? Now, these, you must know this. Judges or persons are drawn from a society, like you and I. It just is a matter of chance that I'm here and you are there when I'm sitting there in a court. Now, otherwise, we are all drawn from the same society. And therefore, you have all these persons with some baggages. All these uh, things color the perceptions at all time. A woman's uh, honor, when we are talking about the woman's purity is necessary because she is to have my child, my boy, and therefore she has to be pure. The purity is Even the response of the society in the Nirkhaya case was a very heartening sign that you know people realize that their daughters, now it is not like uh, the older times when women could be made to stay at home. If a, even a person with very little resources living in Chandigarh or Delhi would like to educate his daughter. So it is, so if she has to be educated, she has to step up. She cannot be protected all the time. So people are beginning to realize that, and that outrage uh, which happened, and the spontaneous, uh, you know, getting together of the society for uh, protesting what had happened in that case, is a sign that the society is evolving towards better rights, and that is what led to the amendment setting up of a uh, you know, committee headed by a retired Supreme Court judge and uh, the amendment of the criminal law. So you see that if the society wakes up, then the governments also have, have to take action. I remember when I was in the National Commission for Women, I attended uh, one meeting in which talking was discussed. And the Home Minister at that time, the Union Home Minister, he was, he was sitting there in his office and uh, there was a conference with the He said that stalking does not happen. That was his view. That stalking does not happen. And a couple of years down the line, now they have uh, 
uh, some included stalking as a crime in the by amendment of section 354 of the they have introduced uh, voyeurism which is that people come so somebody is in a woman is a private uh, in a private act otherwise earlier it was only outraging the modesty and it was punishable up to two years but now the punishments have increased the explicit definitions of stalking, voyeurism and sexual harassment have been given and these have been recognized as crimes. Acid attacks which were uh, women uh, were attacked and they were only, uh, the punishment was under 324, 326 which is previous heard and uh, now it is uh, you know minimum 10 years and an attempt, attempt is also punishable and if there is their punishments including financial compensation to be victim. Therefore, you know, there is a lot of hope that things will move forward. I would only end by saying that, uh, you know, it is the people at the top, the leaders who make a lot of difference. If we have a judge at the topmost level who is sensitive to the concerns of women, it will make a lot of difference in the, uh, you know, treatment of women. Similarly, uh, leaders in the police, like we have 13 uh, women uh, IPS officers today in the Punjab police. I think it would be a rest on their shoulders to improve the lot of uh, women police. We have a DG who is very sensitive to the concerns of women. In fact, uh, he asked me to make a, you know, a poster on sexual harassment and uh, put it uh, across the state, in all the police stations, in all police offices, in all battalion headquarters, which we made and uh, circulated everywhere. So, uh, now he has, uh, uh, now uh, we have decided that uh, we will have a state level conference on women police. Recently, one uh, you know, women constable in Ludhiana committed suicide. So, that was, again, the reasons sexual harassment, these kind of things. There are uh, statutes, action has been taken so that they can report. But still the fear of uh, you know, reporting and speaking out uh, prevents women from really speaking out. So we have to encourage the women, the youngsters, the young women. It's the same applies to all women who are in power. The same book in which Cheryl Sandberg uh, been in. She quoted some other woman who had come to meet her and she asked her how the lots of women can be improved. So then she said there is one way of doing and that is to have more women in power. By saying this I could do it and thank you so much. Thank you very much. I'm so glad that you're so optimistic about the change that is happening and things will happen. Uh, just to share something that uh, the Criminal Law Amendment Act in 2013 which was passed after the Nirbhya incident and lot of provisions which were very novel in the Indian context like stalking, violence, and acid attack, sexual harassment. I think it was about eight or nine months ago that the press reported, uh, and I think it was reported again and again, so most of us may have read that story, that this was a school teacher in Delhi who was being stalked regularly by some uh, <coughs> And she did went, go to the police station to complain. And, uh, but she was a school teacher, she had to go to her workplace every day, and he did not stop. And ultimately, she was finished. I want to ask this question. How many women sitting here in their lives? I'm born in 60. So, um, 40 years or 45 years ago also. Till today, how many women have been stopped in their lives? I would say almost everyone would have been stopped. How many have had, had the courage to go to the police station to lodge a complaint? And if you did have the courage to lodge a complaint, would the investigating or the complaint uh, person in charge of the police station listen to your complaint? lodge So sensitivity not at the highest level, even at the lowest level. And sometimes I find very sensitive officers at the highest level, but doesn't doesn't somehow seem to percolate. Uh, another uh, you know issue which I want to take up and flag is the issue of uh, violence is the sexual harassment. I have been involved in this uh, issue of sexual harassment in the workplace for more than 20 years, part of committees of various organizations. And like uh, Justice Carmen very rightly said, in the case that uh, 